Hey, how's it going everybody? So today's video is not sponsored by TF Supplements. However, it is the best nutrition store you will ever go to in your entire life. I was there just yesterday having a conversation with a good friend of mine, Chris, and we got on the topic of public speaking. And this is something that I have struggled with quite a bit over the years. And I figured I'll make a quick little video to give all of you a few tips and tricks on how to become a better public speaker. This is not something that people do very often. And if they do, usually they get more comfortable with it and become more well-spoken and are able to articulate their thoughts. However, if it's not something you do on a regular basis, it can be very tricky and challenging and nerve wracking. So one of the things that is a very common issue that people struggle with is the use of filler words. This is using ums and uhs and right and things like that whenever you're trying to convey your message. When you use a lot of filler words, the audience, the audience has a tendency to disengage or not pay as much attention because maybe they feel like you're nervous or don't know what you're talking about. So we've got to knock those out. That's the first thing that you've got to focus on. You've got to stop using filler words. Now you may not even know that you're using them. So I challenge you to pull out your cell phone and record yourself talking about a topic that you are passionate about for five minutes. It's a little bit more difficult than you might imagine. After you have that conversation with your phone, talking into the camera, review yourself. Look at the video and count how many filler words you used during that five minute span of time. I have watched people go through executive presentation courses where they've, they've never been on camera, never spoke to individuals. In a five minute window of time, they could say um or uh 20, 30, 40, or even 50 times. It is crazy. And usually they are mortified whenever they realize how often they use filler words. Whenever you start trying to train yourself through the process of, of knocking those out of your vocabulary, whenever you're speaking to people, whether it's on camera or speaking to an audience, you will start to catch yourself sooner and sooner. And by that, I mean, when you first record yourself or watch yourself on your first recording, you'll realize, oh, wow, I used a lot more than I anticipated. That next time you're recording yourself, you'll catch yourself right after you say it. So you'll be talking through this topic and, uh, and then you'll catch yourself and pause and beat yourself up. That's okay. That's part of the process. What will happen is you will start catching it sooner and sooner. And eventually, you'll be able to stop yourself before you use the filler word. This is a little bit of an awkward transition and feels funny. Your brain kind of locks up and acts a little weird for a moment. But what happens is you pause. And that pause builds anticipation from the audience. Because it lets them know you're putting thought into what you're going to share with them. It draws them in. It helps them realize, oh wait, he's putting a lot of thought into this. Let's, let's hear what he has to say. So filler words, you gotta knock them out. You've gotta practice and you've gotta get those out of your vocabulary. Now, this next one is really focused if you're standing or giving a presentation to an audience, but it's getting out of the box. What I mean by that is people that are nervous, whether they're on stage or in front of a group, they have a tendency to kind of stay in their little safe space and they don't move. They may have this massive stage to be able to walk around or this large room, but they'll just stand in one little box. And what happens is we create barriers to protect ourselves. And these are invisible barriers. Sometimes it may just be a line in the floor that people just won't go past. You've got to learn to get out of that box. Start walking around, making eye contact and engaging with people in the room. When you do that, they're gonna pay more attention. They are going to listen more intently and you're gonna captivate them and hold on to their attention that much longer. Another thing that I like to touch on is appearance. Now, right now I'm wearing a t-shirt. It just happens to be a TF t-shirt, but whenever you're giving a public 
presentation or speaking to a large audience, I want you to dress nicely. You've got to wear something nice. You can't come up in like an old 15 year old shirt with holes in it and, and all of that stuff. Dress nice. People aren't really going to pay as much attention to you if you're not dressed nicely. Unless you're Steve Jobs or Elon Musk, go ahead and dress the part. Last thing I want to touch on is hand gestures. Now, this is something that I like to get crazy with my hand gestures. I, I, I use them a lot, but they have to support your message. They have to be aligned with what you're saying. If you're talking about steps do something like that. If you're talking about kind of like setting a standard, making certain movements, they've got to align with your messaging. So uh, all of these things are extremely helpful. Again, I recommend this book. It's fantastic, extremely helpful, quick and easy read, or you can flip through it, you know, a page or two a night, something like that. Uh, all that being said, thank you all for your time. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'm happy to reach out, have some conversations one-on-one -on -one, or make some additional content for you guys. Thank you so much.